Posteromedial approach to the proximal tibia. A brief video. Complex fractures of the proximal tibia often involve a large posteromedial fragment. Accurate reduction of this fragment onto the tibial shaft is critical to allow reconstruction of the joint. Plates applied to the posteromedial aspect of the tibia prevent varus deformity, the most common deformity of the proximal tibia after fracture. Biomechanically, these plates are on the compression side of the bone. Another potential advantage of the incision is that the skin and soft tissues on the posteromedial aspect of the tibia are usually free from blisters that commonly occur on the anterior portion of the tibia. However, if the soft tissues on the posteromedial aspect of the proximal tibia are poor, surgery must be delayed until the soft tissue conditions have improved. Indications. Open reduction and internal fixation of fractures of the medial tibial plateau. Open reduction and internal fixation of complex bicondylar tibial plateau fractures. Upper tibial osteotomy. Drainage of abscess. Biopsy of tumors. Position of the patient. Place the patient supine on a radiolucent table and ensure that adequate visualization of the fracture can be obtained using an image intensifier. Position a sandbag beneath the contralateral hip to roll the patient approximately 20 degrees, figure. This will increase the external rotation of the affected limb, bringing the posteromedial corner of the tibia forward. Ease of access is also improved if the surgeon stands on the opposite side of the table from the approach. Exsanguinate the limb by elevating it for 3 to 5 minutes or by applying a soft rubber bandage. Inflate a tourniquet. Landmarks. The upper end of the tibia is triangular and the posteromedial surface where the tibia flares is easily palpated, even in very obese individuals. Incision. Make a 6 cm longitudinal incision overlying the posteromedial border of the proximal tibia. The exact length of the incision will depend on the pathology to be treated and the implant to be used. Figure. Superficial surgical dissection. Deepen the incision through the subcutaneous fat. The long saphenous vein and the saphenous nerve will be just anterior to your surgical approach. These structures should be identified and preserved. Identify the pezansorinus expansion overlying the tibia figure. Superficial surgical dissection. To approach the tibia, Either divide the pezansorinus longitudinally in the line of the skin incision or identify the anterior border of the pes and partially resected from its insertion into the tibia, reflecting it posteriorly, figure. Deep surgical dissection. Develop an epiperiosteal plane between the pezansorinus and the medial head of the gastrocnemius at the posteromedial border of the tibia. The muscle can be gently freed from the bone by blunt dissection, figure. Dangers. Vessels. The saphenous nerve and vein are encountered during the superficial surgical dissection and should be preserved and protected. How to enlarge the approach? Proximal extension. To reach the posteromedial corner of the knee, the incision may be extended proximally around the medial border of the tibia. Access to the popliteal artery and vein for vascular surgery is also possible through this extension. Distal extension. To extend the approach distally,
continue down along the medial side of the posteromedial tibia. Not only will this give you access to the posteromedial border of the tibia, but it also provides access to both the superficial and deep posterior compartments of the leg for compartment release. Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.